Hey everybody, this is Robert Cadney's with the Chatham County Public Information Office and I want to thank you again for checking out the chat. Today, I am joined by my co-host, Sean Evans. Sean, how are you? Robert, good morning. Good morning to you. And our guest today, if you are interested in doing any type of home projects or if you're a contractor or if you're looking at new construction or you know, remodeling, this is the person that you want to talk to. You really want to listen to what he has to say because it's going to save you ultimately time and money. And that person I'm happy to introduce is Gregory. Gregory Anderson, thank you so much from Building Safety and Permitting. How are you doing? Doing great, Robert. Thank you for the opportunity this morning. Thank you yeah. for taking time out of your day. You know, for those who may not know you or may not be familiar with your department, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came about coming to the county. Well, I'm originally from Connecticut and kind of migrated to Savannah after got coming out of college and where I studied architecture and came to Savannah doing historic preservation work. And eventually went from private sector to the public sector. And I started with the city of Savannah and eventually worked with the county. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, no shortage of work with historic <laughs> preservation <laughs> right. in the Savannah area, that's, right. that's, that's for right. sure. That's right. Well, let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the meat of the yeah. questions here. So we're going to keep it pretty basic to yeah. start. What's the difference in terms of permitting if you're a homeowner or if you're an owner of a rental property? Yeah. Well, the biggest difference, Sean, is the fact that uh, contracting. Under the state of Georgia, a mm -hmm. uh, homeowner who has a piece of property that they own and live in, so this is their dwelling, they can do the work themselves. They can act as their own general contractor. They can do the electrical. They can do the plumbing. They can do the heating and air conditioning. Hmm. But if it's rental property or commercial property, then you have to use a licensed contractor. Licensed through the state of Georgia, Department of, of uh, Secretary of State's office, and be properly licensed to do the work. So that's the major difference between the two. And that's up to the owner to then shop around and find the contractor that they want to go with. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Is that inf information available on, on the website or is that something they need to go to the Secretary of State's office for? They need to go to the Secretary of State's okay. office to check that out. Everybody who does general contracting, mm -hmm. heating, electrical, and plumbing work mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia is licensed through the Department of uh, uh, Secretary of State. Got it. Okay. In, in terms of permitting, is there a difference uh, or is there a different process in new construction or additions? Well, the only difference is is the application. Mm -hmm. Basically, and our application can be found on our website, mm -hmm. downloaded, filled out, and, and, and then submitted to us for the permitting process. The main thing is from a, from a, a, a new construction based upon uh, what you're building and the scope of that work may require uh, construction documents or drawings may require additional things, such as if you're in a flood zone, right. if you have other things that may come into play. With an addition, uh, the, the uh, submittal application is basically the same. Mm -hmm. You may not need as many documents, you may not need as many drawings for that uh, addition, depending, again, on the scope of work. Sure. Yeah. And as far as submitting that application, is that something they need to bring in in person, or can they do it electronically? Currently, you have to bring it in person. We okay. are working on an electronic uh, opportunity for, for, for submittal for certain projects. Mm -hmm. but right now, you have to bring it in along with your application and the filing fee. Gotcha. And that is here at 124? Actually, Culture? it is at 1117 Eisenhower Drive. Out at Eisenhower. Yes, okay. that's where our office is at the Citizen Service Center. Very good. And that's where uh, the permit applications are submitted. Understood. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, how does a person actually apply for a permit? So you said they, they go online for the applications. Yes. And that's the best way. They just pull it up and then fill it out? That's correct. Okay. They can pull it up, print it off, and in that... Uh, application packet mm -hmm. you will indicate what drawings or what documentation needs to be submitted along with that application. Got it. So they'll have the opportunity to look at that, put their application together. Mm -hmm. There's a, a filing fee that goes along which includes the plan review fee okay. that they also will be submitting along with the application and required documents. Physically at our office uh, on Eisenhower Drive mm -hmm. and that begins the process. Got it. And the more the better. Right, as far as information that they put in that application? Sure. Okay. And again, depending upon the scope of work, if, for instance, yeah. you're in the flood zone, mm -hmm. then before you submit to us, then you'll need to contact the county engineering department mm -hmm. to get that uh, adjudicated and worked out. Sure. If you are in an area that requires a septic tank or a drain field, mm -hmm. 
then you're required to go to the health department first right. and get a permit from the health department. Mm -hmm. And then what they give you, you will submit to us in addition to the, the application and other documents that required for us. So a lot of steps, but just to make sure that everything's done by the book, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, obtaining permits can be fairly straightforward, as, you, yeah. as you've been saying, for contractors and homeowners, but not all of them all the time. I know the list is long, but what are some of the <laughs> items folks uh, need to know about yeah. when it comes to this? Uh, one, of, one of the, I guess, more popular items that people don't think require permits, mm -hmm. such as fences. Mm. Every fence requires a permit from our office to determine the, the height. Height of fences are required to be uh, limited depending upon whether the fence is located in the front side or rear yard. Sure. Uh, also, to make sure that the fence is on uh, the particular applicant's property and not encroaching into the neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is to make sure that the fence is structurally sound so it doesn't fall over and create a hazard. Absolutely. Yeah. So no building fortresses around That's your home. That's exactly right. Apartment, exactly right. right. Okay. The other thing is sometimes even swimming pools. People mm. don't realize that you know, certain swimming pools require a permit for, uh, from us. So Makes sense. Okay. okay. Uh, when you apply, what's generally the turnaround time to then receive should all the boxes be checked? Yeah. yeah. Certainly, we, we review the application to make sure that all the submittals are, are uh, what they need to be and, and the application is, com is considered a complete submittal. Got it. Once that happens, then we our turnaround time is a target between seven and ten business days. Oh, wow. And in most cases, if we have all the information we need up front, mm -hmm. then we can turn that, that uh, application around uh, within roughly two weeks. Outstanding. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, and once you get it, is it specific to the project or is it all-inclusive uh, looking at drywall, plumbing, electrical, et cetera? It's, it's all-inclusive. Okay. Again, if, if you're building a brand new house, mm -hmm. then we'll need, obviously, construction documents showing what you're building, mm -hmm. how you're building it, and where you're building it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also need information on your contractors, general contractors, subcontractors, as applicable. Mm -hmm. And we do a, a plan review. We review that, that submittal to make sure everything is complete. Mm -hmm. Then once the permit is issued, then the contractor or the homeowner has the opportunity to start the project and, and, and begin to do construction. Got it. Yeah. But that doesn't happen until, again, all of those criteria. That, are that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So, uh, does the building code identify inspections? What all does that entail? We have on our website, again, uh, under our departmental website, you can mm -hmm. go to our, our uh, drop down box for forms. Mm -hmm. Under that list of forms, there's a, there's a list that indicates what inspections are required. Okay. Depending upon, again, the scope, you have a series of inspections that are done at different intervals of the construction process. Mm -hmm. Our role is to inspect, spot inspect, if you will, because we're not construction managers, we're not contractors. We're there at sure. specific points in the process mm -hmm. that we review to make sure that it meets state code, county ordinance. Mm -hmm. And we're there at different intervals at that spot detection to make sure that, that inspection meets the criteria at that particular time in the process. That makes sense. Yeah. If, if someone has a neighbor that is doing something um, that they think might not be mm -hmm. up to code, is that something they can reach out to you? To... We, we get those calls every day. <laughs> okay, and, and I was so, wondering. Yeah, yeah we got, so <laughs> if, if we certainly have a, a, a telephone number that you could call and ask mm -hmm. or submit a, a complaint, if you will, and okay. we'll follow up to make sure that either there's a, uh, a permit on that particular site or mm -hmm. that they're doing work within the scope of the permit. Okay, yeah. very good. Um, last one from me. What happens if someone jumps the gun in the inspection process or doesn't get the permit for the work, yeah. starts that work before yeah, all the yeah. boxes are checked? Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do have those from time to time. There is a penalty. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a monetary penalty. And uh, a lot of times we try to have people, if you have questions about what a permit is required, to call us first. Okay. And then we can let you know what, what permit's required before you start work. Unfortunately, once you start work, our ordinance requires that we issue a penalty, and that penalty sometimes can be $250 or more mm -hmm. uh, tacked on to the cost of the project. So right. we encourage people, if you have a question about when a permit is required, to give us a call. And well, just one quick follow-up from me before you take it home, Robert. Uh, is that fine just one time until the issue is fixed, or is it every day? Well, that... that um, fine is for doing work without the permit. So okay. once the permit is, is issued, mm -hmm. then the process begins officially. Okay. Okay. Got now, it. if you have uh, challenges with inspections, for instance, if you 
do an inspection, you call for uh, work and call for an inspection, and that inspection fails. Mm -hmm. the, the inspector will cite what the, fa the failures are, mm -hmm. give you time to, to fix that, that problem, mm -hmm. call us back, and we'll come back and re-inspect. Okay. If we come back out second time and it's not inspected, then there's a re-inspection fee. Mm -hmm. And that reinspection fee covers the cost of the inspector coming back and forth sure. to reinspect elements that should have been completed, if not the first time, certainly the second time. Very good. You know, that was a, that was a great question. Yeah. And I've had the privilege of, of talking to Gregory um, a few times, and every single time I talk to you, I learn something. And mm -hmm. I think this is why it's really important for folks who are going to see this, especially since we get a lot of people who are moving here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And whether they're buying a new home or remodeling mm -hmm. a home, this is information that they're going to obviously need, sure. whether they have a contractor or they're going to do it themselves. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if you had, um, well, before I get to my mm -hmm. second to the last question, mm -hmm. we are going to put a link um, with information, contact information, everything about um, building, permitting, and inspections at the end of the uh, podcast, so stick around for that. But if there is a mission statement, Gregory, what would that be? from building safety and permitting. And actually we do have a mission statement. Our mission is to safeguard the, the citizens of the unincorporated county through the issuance of building permits and business licenses and the other regulatory uh, uh, arms that we, that we enforce through our office to make sure that they're meeting the, the state codes, mm -hmm. make sure they're meeting the county ordinances, and even in some cases, even federal requirements. Wow. So our role is, is to inform people, to mm -hmm. let them know what the rules are, and in most cases, give them a process where they can achieve success. Exactly. Um, for folks who are going to see this, if they have any questions, how can they get a hold of you, and what's the best way to get informed? Yeah. The best way is to call, uh, call our office. Our number is 912-201-4300. Mm -hmm. It's a general number, and you can call and ask somebody, and they can give you information. Or you can go to our website. Our departmental website has a contact information piece that you can add uh, and submit your questions, and somebody will get back to you with the answer. And like Sean referenced, all it's print printable and downloadable, right? Those, those that is correct. That and, is correct. Any form that they may need. That is correct. Awesome. That's correct. Sean, any other questions? Because we could talk to Gregory all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, just thank you so much because I think yeah. a lot of folks don't sure. understand the sure. process. Sure. Like Robert said, when yeah. they move to the area, mm -hmm. they're new, they just want to get started. Sure. sure. Um, but there's a reason, there's a process. Right. So yeah. that's that's what we wanted to highlight and sure. I think you did a great job. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Gregory. Right. I know you're busy. You know, you took a bunch of calls <laughs> and I know you gotta get back to work. So that's right. So thank you very Certainly. much for joining us. And for Sean Evans, my co host Gregory Anderson, I'm Robert Katniss. We'll see you next time on the chat. <laughs>